Hello everyone, it's Leo K. This is a playthrough of Resident Evil 2 Remake on Hardcore Difficulty. We're going for the S plus rank, which entails two specific requirements. One, we cannot save any more than three times throughout the entire game, and two, we must finish it in under two hours and thirty minutes. The timer for in-game time pauses during cutscenes, so I will be able to include the entire story. Look, man, I'm serious, okay? I saw this with my own eyes. Oh, I believe you, buddy. I believe you. <laughs> Just tell us a story. Tell us a story. Okay, well, it was last Friday night. I was walking home from the bar, and this woman started coming towards me. She was staggering, you know, so I, I figured she was drunk. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, tell us, be honest now, how many drinks did you have? No, man, I, I barely had a buzz on her. Oh, come on. Look, just listen, all right? She got closer, and I got a good look at her. You had to see her eyes, her nose, her whole face. It looked like it was rotting. Yeah. She looked like a corpse. Like a walking corpse, man. <laughs> Sounds like my wife. I've never seen anything like it. I haven't been able to sleep since that night. All right, calm down, buddy. Calm down. Just, hey, you got to stay strong, okay? Don't give in to fear out there, right? Yeah, well, you got that right. Oh, come on. Just getting good. I need some sleep. ones around That's weird After these first few cutscenes, we get control of Leon at the gas station, and, you know, he knows that something's amiss, he's going to investigate. Hello? Anybody there? Hmm. Something's not right. The objective that the game gives the player here is investigate the store, and this is something that will continue to be present throughout the rest of the game, this idea that exploration is player-directed. The game never really tells you what to do. This first zombie, you can run past immediately, and this is something you can do to a lot of zombies. Whenever an enemy is currently inside of an animation that they can't actually do anything from, you can run past them as long as they're still in that animation. 
We're gonna go ahead and discard this key since we don't need it anymore. Items that are unnecessary will have a red check mark on them in your inventory. I'll probably end up talking about this gas station in a later video, but the game is teaching you here that you will be in puzzle-esque environments and you will be in close quarters with enemies. And a lot of the time, yeah, you just so. have to keep moving. Thanks. You can thank me later, when we're safe. Holy shit. So Leon's met another survivor here. Come on! This is actually the other playable character if you choose to play as her. Hold on. have some answers at the police station. Wait, you're a cop? Yeah, Leon Kennedy. You are? Claire. Claire Redfield. You live around here? No. I'm looking for my brother. He's a cop too. Well, it's a good thing we found each other. I don't know what to expect anymore. Attention all citizens, due to the citywide outbreak, you are advised to take shelter at the Raccoon City Police Station. Free food and medical supplies will be provided to everyone in need. Oh my god, this is so unreal. The police station's not much farther. They'll know something. Yeah, but what if we're the only ones? What if there's no survivors? No, there's survivors. It's a big city. There has to be. Looks like we're walking from here. Whoa! 
Are you okay? Stay here, it's not safe. Go on ahead. I'll meet you at the station. I'll be there. Alright. So out starting out immediately, we gotta turn around, back away from all of these zombies, and start making our way to the raccoon police department. Staying in the streets is a decidedly bad idea. Shit. It's everybody. Seeing as I got a few frame drops there, I should talk about uh, where I'm playing the game and what settings I'm playing it on that are relevant to this playthrough anyway. I'm playing this on PC and my frame rate is locked to 60 frames per second. This is so that my knife deals exactly the same amount of damage that PS4 and Xbox One players knives will do and it's so that you know, I'm not able to do any easy knife strats that those players would not be able to do. So, uh, what you see in this video you can use on any platform. I take damage at various points throughout this playthrough. It's very rare, but I do get hurt. Hello? And um, Is anybody here? it's usually during boss fights. But yeah, for the most part, I like to think I'll be playing Pretty well. Hmm. Okay. Resident Evil 2 has almost like a Metroidvania world structure where acquiring different key items will allow you to explore different parts of the RPD and, you know. You can walk around, investigate areas, find resources, uh, find items that will let you solve puzzles and progress that way. And of course, some of these areas will be populated with enemies, so you have to deal with those as well. Uh, this area is optional right here. This is the women's bathroom. There is a first aid spray on top of this toilet. You can pick it up and keep moving. One thing that I do in this playthrough that deviates from some other people's runs is that I actually try to clear every area as soon as I possibly can. And by clear, I mean clear of items. That way, I don't have to return to places. Come here, help me! I got you. Give me your other hand! Remember what I said, how zombies that are stuck in animations can't do anything to you? Well, a zombie breaking through a door and being in that animation lets you walk right past it. These two guys, you have a very high percent chance to just run right past them if you're very confident and bold and keep moving. You don't have to do it this way, you can instead choose to go into the room on the right there where we picked up the bullets earlier from that corpse and kind of kite them around and shoot them down in there, but this way usually works, so. You're safe for now. Thanks. Marvin Brana. Leon Kennedy. There was another officer I couldn't... Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sure you did what you could, Leon. Does anyone know what started this? Not a clue. But honestly, all you need to know is that this place will eat you alive if you aren't careful. Yeah, well, I was supposed to start last week, and I got a call to stay away. I wish I'd come here sooner. 
You're here now, Leon. That's all that matters. Okay, Lieutenant. I'm ready. Hopefully you'll be able to find a way out of this station. That officer you met earlier, Elliot. He thought this secret passageway might do the trick. Mm. This is good news. We can get you to a hospital. No, no, I am not the priority here. Lieutenant, I'm not just gonna leave you here. I'm giving you an order, rookie! You save yourself first. I'd come with you, but I'd just slow you down. Now, you'll need this. I can't take it. Stop. Them. And don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. You take it out. Or you run. Got it? Yes, sir. <laughs> now we get a combat knife. Knives in this game have durability. You can only deal a certain number of hits with them before they shatter. So starting out, we're going to clear as many items from this central area as we possibly can. And then we're going to use the knife, which just once in the entire game right here acts as a key item. We're going to use it to get out. So first we're going to pick up those bullets. Um, we need roughly 100 handgun ammo to easily defeat the first boss. Over here, we're going to go to the statue. The combination for this is lion, bird, herb. Uh, it's lion, herb, bird. Sorry. My bad. And we can get the lion medallion. Over here is the waiting room. There's an herb and a pistol upgrade for Leon's Matilda. For some reason, I leave that menu before picking it up. The combo for this is 6 2, 11. Just a bit nervous and sweaty. That's why I didn't grab this item successfully. I'll calm down soon enough. Anyway, with this out of the way, there is a first aid spray on the bottom floor, as well as uh, the statue itself, which we can put one of these medallions into. So here's the spray. First aid spray heals you to full health when you use it. Which is uh, obviously very useful. We're gonna dump everything except for the ammo, the knife, and the key item that we need. Yeah, but the passage isn't open yet. Now, there's nothing left we can possibly do in this area, so we have no choice but to proceed. Green herbs are healing items. They're the most basic healing item you can possibly use. So, in a pinch, you know, you can go ahead and use one. But usually, you would want to save green herbs for combining with other herbs. That way, they give you different effects, they become stronger, and so on and so forth. Oh, what the fuck? A very distressing sight indeed. What? Uh, you want to walk into this corpse here, because... When you do, it knocks it down, and it gives you that little stagger animation on your character. If you don't do it now, you might bump into it later, and that wouldn't be good. Anyway, that lady is going to break through that window. That shows us that zombies can, in fact, come in through the windows. And we will soon get an item that allows us to prevent that from happening. Over here, I am trying to down or otherwise incapacitate this guy because... Oh, and I got a lucky crit. So the way critical hits work with pistols is that if you do crit with your pistol, 
uh, the zombie's head will just explode like that into gooey chunks. And they are guaranteed dead, dead forever. They will never get back up again. What the fuck? Trying to take out the second guy as well. Get the feeling that he's still alive, and yes he is, so I'm just poking him a little bit more. These two character models are gonna collide here and start twitching out a little. Very, uh, disturbing in a game like this, if I may say. Alright, he didn't move after that, so, you know, no, no real way to tell whether he's alive or not, but we're just gonna hope. We dumped a good amount of ammo into his face. This guy in the corner, he actually uh, is not dead. So try not to touch him. The combination for this is 9-15-7. You would normally find this out later in the game, but doing it right now gives you an inventory upgrade. You get two extra slots, which in this game is very, very important. I'm checking to make sure I picked up the ammo in that lock. Punching 109 into this keypad allows you to get some extra pistol ammo early. And now we proceed. Remember that window earlier that that female zombie crashed in through? Well, here's another window, and... Now that the game has shown us that, the player knows what will happen if we leave this alone. So instead, we can use these wooden boards to barricade that. Now, that zombie might break the window, but it will never be able to get in through the wooden boards. So that window is now secure for the rest of the save file. Green herb and red herb creates green-red herb mix, which fully restores your health. It's basically the same thing as a first aid spray. Just... You can craft them yourself. Very handy. There's handgun ammo on this body, which again isn't a body. If you disturb her or shoot her, she'll wake up. What I'm trying to do is uh, blow off this guy's leg because it will make him a lot easier to manage. There we go. Zombies that are in a falling down animation due to their leg being blown off, uh, they also can't do anything to you. We're gonna create another red-green mix. The combination for this locker is cap, and we can get some shotgun shells, which we cannot use yet, but they will be useful later. There's a portable safe in this room, which gives you one of the keys to the keypad in the evidence storage room, but acquiring both portable safes and solving the puzzle for both of them takes enough time and then you know also going back to the storage room that all takes enough time that it's something we don't really want to do so we're not going to the combo for that locker there is dcm i'm not actually going to pick up the magnum ammo because it won't be relevant for a very long time we're just kind of opening that and leaving it what? there what we just saw there was a liquor fascinating beastie liquors are very damaging they're blind, and we'll talk more about them later. I got a lucky crit on this guy's head, and he died naturally. But even if you don't critical hit his head, um... Leon, it's Marvin. I need you back here ASAP. Are you okay, Marvin? I've got something to show you. It's important. Copy that. I'll be even right there. Even if you don't crit that zombie, you can tell that he's died when he falls down off the off the ceiling. So, same principle. Shooting legs off is really strong in this game. I'm kind of just trying to poke her and get that going. When you stand still for long enough, you will do what's called a focus shot. The visual for that is your crosshair shrinking to have a dot in the middle. Focus shots raise the individual damage of that particular bullet, and also increases the chance that that bullet will crit. So, they're very good, they're very useful. The only cost is time, because you have to stand absolutely still and not move. The combination for this statue is Pisces, Scorpio, Aquarius, or Fish, Scorpion, Water, Jug. 
earlier, just uh, a few seconds ago, you saw us combine um, two gunpowders to create more handgun ammo. I just kind of did that to get one of them out of my inventory. There's more handgun ammo here. We are slowly building up our stock. That zombie who's eating the corpse, uh, he will never wake up as long as you don't disturb him, so don't. There you are. Come here. Take a look. Yes! I knew she'd make it. Oh, you know her? Yeah. Name's Claire. I came into town with her. You can get to that courtyard. Through the second floor. East side. I'm on it. Thanks, Lieutenant. So now we have another medallion to put into the statue. We also have the spade key. And this game will not let you discard or, you know, destroy key items until you've exhausted all of their possible uses. So let me get back in here. This puzzle, the combination for it is Ned for the left lock and MRG for the right lock. You would normally find this out by reading the name tags on the desks around you, but this gives us more ammo per clip for the Matilda, Leon's starter pistol. We're gonna go over here, we're going to drop the shotgun shells because we don't need them yet, one of the knives, and that is about it. We're gonna hold on to the other things. Our goal right now is to pick up some items, acquire the shotgun, and then do some setting up of an area we need to run through before we actually run through it, because very soon we're going to trigger a scripted event which causes a lot of zombies to be all around us. And if we set up our environment ahead of time, this will be very easy to deal with. So you can see that key no longer has any uses. It's been used on every possible door, so we can discard it. Going into this room, we can pick up the weapons locker key card. The book that we picked up from the corner on the desk in the library combines with this arm. The arm and book then combine with the statue. The statue lets go of the scepter, and examining the scepter gives us a red jewel. This red jewel will be used later to give us the magnum. I know it sounds complicated, but it's actually not that bad. You can examine items to, you know, turn them around in your hand and stuff like that. Anyway, now that we have the weapons locker keycard, we are going to go over here. What just crash landed there is the same helicopter Leon heard about from the, the very disturbingly dead gentleman in the hallway with the mangled face and neck. We're gonna go this way. Now, this gentleman woke up recently. So we are going to what the? manage him by shooting him in the leg a bunch. There we go. We got a fall animation. That means we're safe to run past him. Use the weapons locker keycard here. This gives us a shotgun and some extra ammo for it. The shotgun allows you to guarantee head explosions, or decapitations as we call them, uh, if you are close enough to the enemy before you pull the trigger. So it's kind of a risk reward thing, you really have to get quite close. So now that we have the shotgun, we're going to stow... Uh, I forgot my shotgun ammo. See, I turn around, I'm like, oh wait, I, I need shells. 
We're not going to use our pistol anymore because shotgun is going to be much more expedient for the next length of time. We're not going to worry about this first window because it's the easiest to deal with. We're going to remove this lady. We were too far away on the first shot, but the second one lets us decapitate her. We're able to block off that window. And then over here, we're able to block off this window. The reason why we do these two instead of the first one is that the first one lets you have a long walk up to it. And you can see for miles everything around you, everything in front of you. Whereas the second window and the third one, they're both around corners, so it's very possible that you get blindsided or stealth grabbed by a zombie from around the corner. And it's better to just eliminate the possibility of zombies appearing there by blocking those windows before you, you know, before you trigger the event that spawns all those zombies, which we are about to do right now. Claire! Hold on! I'll be right there! Okay! Claire! It's so nice to see you. How are you doing? That helicopter just came out yeah, of nowhere. I'm in one piece. I'm guessing you don't have a key in one of those fancy pockets? Uh, unfortunately, no. Mm. But how are you doing? You know, just surviving. That's good. Yeah. Any luck with your brother? No, not yet. Claire, don't lose hope. I'm sure we're gonna find him. Damn it. You know what that means? Yeah. Dinner time. Claire, I think you should go. Don't worry about me, Leon. You take care of yourself. Claire, you need to go. Now. Okay. Let's get through this. Both of us. Alright, so uh, there are zombies everywhere. The, um, the fire alarm zombies. ringing out kind of will attract all Marvin, their attention. Marvin! We have the bolt cutters now, which allows us to move through uh, doors that are bound with chains. There are three such doors in the police station. This one that we just went through, this one that we're about to go through, and one at the end of this little gauntlet. So you have to act pretty fast, because zombies will be coming in from everywhere throughout this little sequence. Come right here, assassinate this guy from behind, grab this fuse. Our inventory is full now, but we're gonna free up some space by combining the yellow gunpowder with the normal gunpowder. Oh, uh, yep, and then combining the shotgun shells that we produce with the other stack of shotgun shells to put them together. Then we can pick up the valve handle and exit out into this hallway. The... The office there, you can find a flashbang in, and if you're about to be overwhelmed by the three zombies in this hallway, you can throw the flashbang to give yourself some security, but if you act quick enough, you can wait for the shutter to open without those three zombies actually getting up to you. So it allows us to conserve it for later, which is very nice. Shit! managed to get the decapitation on the second shot. We can finally plug this window up because this hallway is a place we will run through one more time uh, in the mid game. But now that we've secured all the windows, it's no longer uh, an unsafe area. At least, not for now. We can discard the bolt cutters now. This is half of a bomb. 
or I should say a third of a bomb. In this room we can also pick up an herb and another flashbang. The valve handle that we picked up in the office from earlier, we can use this up here in the locker room where we got some of the shotgun shells from earlier. Decapitated that one. Decapitated that one. I'm just trying to clean these guys up. Just for my own peace of mind. It may have been a waste of ammo to actually uh, remove the second zombie there, the one that was fallen down that had no leg, because I'd already managed him earlier. So remember that liquor we saw earlier? Well, now we're gonna get to see it in action. Don't worry though, it's stuck in this animation eating this corpse, so it can't actually attack us yet. But liquors are blind. They operate based on sound, so as long as you don't fire your gun or sprint around them, as long as you keep walking, you can stay in stealth and they will never detect you. There's some nice goodies to pick up in this office, which we're going to do. Combine the battery with the electronic gadget. And this will allow us to blow up a certain barricade that we are coming up on very soon. There's the liquor, it's on the wall. You can see as long as we keep walking, it will not aggro us. some C4. Now we have a detonator. That zombie that we killed earlier, the reason we killed him is to make the little puzzle in this room a lot easier. The reason we exit and then enter the door is so that the bookcase doesn't fall over. The solution for this one is woman, bow and arrow, snake, or worm. And now we're going to change our equipped sub-weapon to flashbang because liquors are very hard countered by flashbangs, shall we say. Once you flashbang that liquor, uh, you can just drop back into stealth and as long as you keep walking it won't see you. There are two remaining zombies alive in this library. Maybe three, I'm not sure if that that lady zombie is still kicking but this one we will decapitate and this one we will decapitate the reason we do so is because later we will be running away from a certain enemy and we will be going through this library and when that enemy is chasing us we will prefer this space to be cleared of other hostiles so it's just it's nice to do. And same thing, the reason we move the, the bookshelves there is so that when that entity is chasing us, we have an easier time of it, a quicker time of it, and we don't have to waste so much time. That's a trick that I stole from Carcinogen SDA, who is my favorite Resident Evil content creator. You should definitely check him out. He gave me the inspiration to start doing runs like these. So it goes underground. Huh. That's it. That's our way out. Lieutenant Brenna! Marvin! It's time to go. Hey, Marvin. <laughs> we need to get you to a hospital right now. No, no, I... Uh, save yourself. Come on, I've got you. Go! No! Look, we can still make it out of here together. You just can It's too late. I tried, Leon. But I couldn't stop it. We can't let this thing spread. It's on you now. Just go! I understand. I really like the fake out that the game does to the player there. 
when Marvin wakes up, he wakes up with like a snarl, like a growl. Because, you know, he has been bitten, so it kind of tricks you into thinking, oh my god, like he's he's already turning, he's gonna attack me. But no, he's just, he just got startled. So we're gonna pick up an ink ribbon, which we're not gonna use yet. Shotgun ammo, which we're not gonna use yet. We're gonna dump everything except for our heals. Um, our ammo. We're gonna pick up our Matilda. We're gonna pick up the rest of the ammo we have, and we're actually going to combine more gunpowders and make more ammo. So this gives us just over 100 handgun bullets, which should make it pretty easy to defeat this upcoming boss. If you're running this game at uh, twice the frame rate I'm running it now at 120 FPS, you can just essentially stun lock the boss using the knife because you will be doing so much damage uh, per swing that you will just be stun locking him forever and he can't even move. But on 60 FPS, the best and safest way to defeat him is to just gun him down by shooting a hundred bullets into his face. I'm gonna immediately open by throwing the grenade at him that we picked up from uh, from the bottom of those stairs. I'll knife him a few times. When Leon says no choice, gotta take it down, you can disengage and just start running away. Create some space between you and just start shooting him. Uh, shots to his head or to the eye in his shoulder, which when hit uh, sprays yellow blood instead of red. Probably pus, actually. But anyway, shots to his head or to his big eyeball deal extra damage. So if you can hit those, it's very nice. But if you can't, hitting him in the body is more than good enough. The main concern is just wasting as few bullets as possible. I do have some extras, so I'm permitting myself to miss some of these shots in favor of, you know, just trying to output maximum damage per second. But usually you would want to remain pretty active. This is a good spot to fire at him from, because there's this little obstruction in the way, he kind of has to walk around it a little. And yeah, the number one thing with this guy is just don't get greedy. You know, fire a few shots at him and then run away again. You're trying to live more than you're trying to kill him. Because if you just keep, uh, you know, kiting him around like this, you will win. He has this, uh, it's not really even a special move, it's just kind of like a thing he does where if, uh, if he's off your screen, he can actually just disappear, especially when all the smoke fills the space. Steam, really, when all the steam fills the space. He has this, uh, thing he does where he disappears and then he you know, sneaks up on you and like grabs you, but the grab doesn't do any damage. It just kind of messes with your positioning. So if that happens, you don't have to worry too much. But it shouldn't happen on this run. I can still see him. Shot at him one last time. And, yeah, he just is defeated here. If you do run out of ammo, the extra flashbangs we brought can help you, you know, 
stun him with one and then just like knife the rest of his HP down. You can do that. The area around here also has Somebody additional resources, which we are going to pick up after the fight is done. But if you're struggling, you can actually start picking up and using these during the fight. So there's a green herb, there's some ammo. And there are three of these sort of resource caches around this combat arena. You can check your map for these. There's another grenade here, which makes the one that we used earlier okay to use. This red herb will stack with the green. This box of handgun ammo will stack with the other. And we should be free to leave now. There's a gunpowder in this locker and a green herb in the corner here. I'm only going to be able to pick up the green herb. I don't have enough space for the gunpowder, but that's alright. The only thing this will change is... Um, we will end up making extra magnum bullets once, rather than shotgun shells, which is what we would normally be crafting. You can do a lot of damage to this boss by shooting him with Cleon's shotgun in the eye. But the reason we don't do that is because for this upcoming section, having a lot of shotgun ammo is very comfortable. So that's how we're going to approach it. So the first sort of, you know, episode of this game is find all the medallions and defeat the first boss, G. He's named so because the virus that transformed him is called the G-Virus. Uh, alternatively referred to as G1 for reasons we will find out later. But anyway, we try to escape the garage Damn. and we can't because we need, we need a key, key card. card. Lower it. FBI. Sorry. Thank you. For your help. Surprised you made it this far. FBI, huh? What's going on here? Sorry. That information's classified. Where are you going? Do yourself a favor. Stop asking questions and get the hell out of here. So yeah, that's hey, uh, I'm not done talking that's to you. mommy. There's some handgun ammo on the corner here. There's a map of the basement. So now we are in the basement, and we don't know what our next main objective is. We're going to find out right about now. Hello? Hey. I don't believe it. A real human. <laughs> Hello, human. You been here long? Long enough. Are we the last ones alive? No. No, there's a few of us. Huh. That's good news, I guess. Yeah. That's, of course, Irons sent you. Irons? You mean Chief Irons? Is he still around? Who cares? Hopefully he's somebody's dinner by now. What do you mean by that? He's the bastard that locked me in here. I'm sure he had a good reason. He did. 
How's about to blow the whistle on his dirty ass? I'd have done the same thing to him, I guess. Hey, I'll make you a deal. Unlock this cell and I'll give you this. There's no other way out of that parking garage. Believe me. Sorry, I can't do that. I have to talk to the chief first. Look, we're both prisoners in the station. So either we play nice and help each other out. <laughs> Shit, it's coming. What? What's coming? Come on. Come on, don't be an asshole. Okay, you need this. Just get me the fuck out of here. Oh my god. Who is that? It's just me. So I can put that thing away. I, I don't even know what happened. It just happened so quick. I told you to get out of here. You wouldn't want to end up like Ben, would you? You knew him? He was an informant. Had information of use to my investigation. So what he said was true? Hey, you can't keep walking away from me. I don't even know your name. I'm Leon Kennedy. Find a way out, Leon. Before it's too late. Then we'll talk. Name's Ada. So our objective now is to get that parking permit. That, uh, that key card. And in order to do that, we need to power on this place. So that we can open Ben's cell. So instead of collecting three medallions, we need to collect two electronic parts. Uh, one of these is found in the lowest place of the police station, and the other one is found in the highest place. Going into this room allows us to pick up some more shotgun ammo. Those two zombies that you see lying down there, they're not, uh, they're not actually dead. They will wake up if you try to come back into that room, but we will never come back into that room. So we don't have to worry about that. There's a blue herb here. Blue herbs, what they do is they remove poison. They're basically like an antidote. And kill these dogs. Killing these dogs while they're in their cages will cause the game to, you know, give you less dogs to fight later, which makes sense because the ones that would normally come after you, you've removed most of them. We also picked up a yellow gunpowder, which we will use to create more shotgun ammo soon. In that second drawer, there's a red herb. In this last one, there's a flashbang. Combine these gunpowders, combine the stacks of shotgun ammo, combine red and blue, which on its own gives no healing, but it casts away poison and it gives you a shield, a damage shield, which uh, halves the damage you take from everything. This is a box for an electronic part. We can examine it and open it along the seam. So now we have one of two electronic parts, we need to get the second one. and. As easy and quick as getting this first one was, that is exactly how difficult and time-consuming getting the second one will be. But now, we've restored power to this section of the police station. 
Unfortunately, what this causes is some of these dogs to be able to escape uh, you know, the various places they were locked in. So, there's a few of them we have to deal with. I don't actually manage to get a full-on square shot onto that dog. So it survives. This one always runs into that corner, so you can shoot it there. This one will break in. Shoot that. So as you can see, the shotgun is very handy for taking out zombie dogs because they are um, fragile speedsters, basically. They're very fast enemies. They don't do too much damage, but they move very quickly and they don't have a lot of health. So if you can get one good shot on them, they're gone. You don't even have to hit them in the head, you can just fire center mass. This is another safe room. We're gonna clear this place out. Drop most of our items in here. We don't need this part yet. This looks pretty good. There's some magnum ammo here, foreshadowing that we'll be able to get this weapon somewhat soonish. But we don't need it just yet, so we're gonna put that away. We do need the fuse in order to get out of here. Now, there are three zombies right here. It can be somewhat difficult to deal with. We decapitate the first one pretty well. Second one grabs us. He turned around very quickly there, so I had no choice but to use a flashbang on him. Finally got the decapitation. I got a lot of shotgun misses there. Well, quote unquote misses. Technically, my shots hit, but. They didn't, what the hell? you know, they didn't decapitate, so I had to fire again. We have two bullets left, which is uh, a little bit of a sticky situation to be in. Usually you would want a little bit more shotgun ammo. All this means is that I'll just have to be very accurate and very risky with my upcoming shotgun blasts. But that's alright. What matters is that we secure that area, because we will be going back through that hallway and if any of those zombies are still alive on our way back, it will make it uh, more difficult than it needs to be. Can use that crank there to open that. Down here uh, is an area that you can decide when you want to come down here. You can do so immediately or you can wait on it. It's actually probably better to wait on it, because, you know, if we want the magnum, we'll be coming down here anyway. I'm gonna equip this knife and try to face the zombie, just in case he finishes his get-up animation. And if he does, and if we're facing him and he grabs me, we can parry the grab by using the knife on him. But we were fast enough, so he didn't. Pick up the flashbang. Uh, I don't actually need that, but... Yeah, decided to grab it anyway. And since the crank is of no use to us anymore, we can discard it. God damn it. Got the decapitation on the second shot. Got the decapitation on the first shot. Very nice. So this room is now safe. There are only these two zombies here. It's nice to secure this room in particular, because later, uh, when you're running away, it's useful to be able to go through here unharassed. Another blue herb, we got two now. Going down here causes this ladder to break, which means we cannot get back up. And that forces us to go in one direction here. We have no choice. 
but to go exactly where Capcom wants us to go. Those of you who have seen pre-release promotional material might recognize this area. Something very special happens here. I should say begins happening here. At this dead end, the game gives us two whole green herbs. Very handy. We're gonna go ahead and stack them with our existing herbs. I'm gonna turn this switch from right to left. Uh, we down that yeah. zombie, we don't actually kill him. And I'm gonna save this shell because he fell in an advantageous position. We don't actually need to burn that shotgun shell on him. So if I had picked up the gunpowder from the locker that I didn't have space for back under the RPD, then I would have been able to make more shotgun ammo. But since I didn't, I combined yellow and yellow to make magnum ammo. We're gonna keep the gear. We're gonna take the red jewel because we're gonna be using it soon. And that should be good. This is the clover key. We're gonna use it to access one optional area and one mandatory area. And this crashed helicopter that uh, you remember from the beginning of the be beginning of the game. We can extinguish the fire on it and meet this guy. Jesus Christ! Yeah, he's he's a big fellow. So tyrant. The way you avoid tyrant is pretty simple. He's mostly just a force of pressure, a force of intimidation. Most of the time he's just there to freak you out and to, you know, stress you out and make you nervous rather than being there to actually kill you. Um, obviously if you slip up or you start getting cocky and start playing poorly, he will kill you, especially on hardcore. A single punch from him on hardcore will drop your health to danger status, which means one more hit from anything and you're dead. But yeah, what he likes to do is walk at you and punch you. All right, so this zombie, I'm in a very poor position here. He's gonna grab me. I made sure to stay on the flat surface of these stairs because if you get grabbed on an incline or on stairs, then you get thrown to the ground and you don't get a chance to use a defense item. I get hung up on the wall there because I panicked a little. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's Mr. X's function. He's just there to freak you out, to pressure you into playing poorly. Don't fall for it, don't do what I do. Anyway, red jewel plus jewelry box gives us the stars badge. And this allows us to get the magnum as well as upgrades for the magnum. Now over here, the next few minutes are very uncomfortable mechanically because I'm essentially waiting for Mr. X to leave I'm really trying to make sure that, you know, he's not going to bother me. And I'm pretty sure I don't hear his footsteps anymore, so let's slowly walk and try to get out of here. He's somewhere, he's somewhere around here. I don't want to fire a gunshot, so instead I'll just use this knife to defend against this grab. But, yeah. He was coming this way. You can see what I mean, like, this area, there's really only one exit out of it. So, being here 
is very unnerving. I'm just waiting for Tyrant to go away so that I can leave. Okay, he opened that door, so we're fine now. <laughs> He's near us, physically, but there's only one wall he can actually go through, so we are free to just keep moving. Now, with that clover key that we just got, we can also access the records room and grab the jack handle for the shelves in the library. I am gonna grab this magnum ammo though. And I'm gonna put back this gunpowder. Because I think at this point I decide to actually... Or not yet. Looks like I'll be trying to get the jack handle first. Alright, so this hallway, there's gonna be some liquors in here now. This is part of the reason why we boarded up these windows. Because if you get unlucky, Tyrant and Liquor's threat ranges will overlay on top of each other here. They'll both be, you know, trying to hit you, trying to chase you. Um, if you're the unluckiest person alive, or if you had no foresight and didn't board up these windows earlier, you will be dealing with Tyrant, Lickers, and Zombies, which is just an absolute nightmare, and you're guaranteed to take some kind of damage on Hardcore or burn a lot of resources. So when you pick up this jack handle, there's some scripting going on behind the scenes, and Mr. X has a chance, a very high chance, to just lock onto your position and start chasing you immediately. That's why they give you these long shelves in this room. So we're gonna start walking as soon as we leave here. Remember, there's still liquor in this hallway. And because we don't want either the liquor or Tyrant to hit us, we're gonna flash both of them and just carefully walk out until we move out this door and then we can start running. So that's a pretty easy way to deal with that scenario. If you know that it's going to happen, you can just chuck the flashbang there. This upcoming hallway will also have liquors in it. So again, we're gonna be very careful, we're gonna walk. You don't actually have to walk along on these stairs. Liquors can't move on stairs. So you can just go ahead and begin running immediately. Here though, we do have to walk. I think he's behind us. Oh no, he's, uh, he's on top of the ceiling. Good stuff. So now that we have the stars badge, this has two functions. One, if we examine the item, turn it around and click it, it becomes a USB key. This gives us authorization to open this armory door. Take the dongle back. This gives us the Lightning Hawk Magnum. This weapon is incredible. Can stun Tyrant with a single headshot. Can kill most things in a single shot. Kills liquors in two or three shots. But of course, we're going to be conserving most of the ammo from this gun for specific situations. And now that we have the jack handle and we're in the library, we can use it on this shelf and then move the shelves from the very left one, move all of them one space to the right. This creates a little bridge or walkway above. And that lets us access the clock tower hallway. I do something kind of embarrassing coming up, so get ready for my camera to jerk really awfully, because despite having played this game now 13 times, somehow, I guess I was just thinking about stuff, I forgot that these two zombies are right here. Normally I would headshot these from... Yeah, you see, I'm just like, oh my god. Freak out. So since I know the left one is stunned, 
I go ahead and headshot. Uh, headshot the left one. So that could have gotten better, but it could have gone worse. My inventory is full here. I'm still kind of not thinking straight from the combat high. And I realize I actually can't pick this up without discarding something, so I just discard this green herb because they're reasonably plentiful. And uh, we'll be able to find more. I'm also fairly confident in myself when I play this game. I don't take too much damage. Again, it's only during boss fights. Most of my healing items I end up using during bosses. In normal gameplay, like, I can just maneuver and stun and manage and control enemies pretty effectively. But anyway, with this clock tower puzzle, we gotta get it all moving. And that part that is right there that you see. I'll get knocked down. And we can grab it. Hope I don't have to write a report on this. As Hazeblade, another cool Resident Evil speedrunner, says, No, Leon, you won't have to write a report on this. Raccoon City will be obliterated in the next game. Which, for those of you who don't know, is the aptly named Resident Evil 3 and it takes place both before and after RE2. Like, it takes place before RE2, in parallel with RE2, and after RE2. And at the end of that game, Raccoon City gets annihilated in a nuclear strike. So, yeah, I don't think Leon's gonna have to worry about any paperwork. All right, we got what we came for. It's time to leave. We cleared this hallway earlier of enemies so we can run through it. We will not be returning here ever, so these zombies busting in through the windows are not a problem. Gonna access storage box. We need the second electronic part. And we're gonna put this away. We're gonna. Grab that as well. So at the end of this little place, there's going to be another escape sequence. But first we're gonna shoot these dogs for insurance. The Magnum will one-shot them on any difficulty. You can choose to also just run past all of them, and if you do zigzags, they are very unlikely to hit you. So if you want to conserve that ammo, you can choose to do that. When we put both of these electronic parts into this wall panel, we have to figure out this puzzle. And we want to combine the inputs from the green, uh, not green, from the, thinking about herbs, from the blue and red wires and feed them into the purple one at the end. And then we win. Explain the rumor 
rumors about the orphanage. I, I just find it way too coincidental Umbrella is one of the benefactors. You told me this interview was about the new scholarship Umbrella set up. <laughs> Come on, that, that nobody cares about that. They want to know about the G-Virus. Where did you hear about this? And that big fucking sinkhole in the city, which, by the way, rumor has it goes straight to your underground lab. Now, are yeah. you going to talk to me, or are you going to... The interview is over. <sighs> Got the key card. There's a first aid spray in the corner here. Unfortunately, restoring the power is not all a good thing. All these zombies are gonna leave their cells. We're gonna shoot this one once, throw a flashbang, get grabbed, the flashbang will go off, stunning everyone and breaking the grab. And then we can leave. By the way, yes, that was Tyrant there. That was Mr. X. <laughs> That's probably the easiest way to escape that place. Easiest and fastest. Yeah. This is getting old. Saving your ass, that's twice. I didn't realize you were keeping score. Look, this isn't a game. Hoping you could explain what's on it? Maybe. After I hear it. Let's get out of here. If you wait around a little bit, Ada says some optional dialogue, which is kind of funny. We might want to open the shutter. She's just so passive aggressive about it, I love her. <laughs> Is that the intel you needed? Unfortunately, no. Ben didn't come through. Well, what exactly are you looking for? More info on the people responsible for this mess. Road's out. Going through that gun shop looks like the only way. I said, don't move. I'm just passing through. I'm gonna ask you to lower that weapon. I kill you are. You're gonna turn around and go right back out the way you came in. I think your daughter needs help, sir. Don't tell me how to deal with my daughter. Drop it. No! Wait! Step aside. We need to terminate her before she turns. Terminate? Fucking daughter. Ada. Just let them be. Emma? Sweetheart, I told you to stay put. Daddy. Yeah, the daddy's here. Okay. Those fucking things outside. they did to us. You're a cop. 
You're supposed to know something. How did this happen? Huh? She was a sweet little angel. Mommy. I'm sleeping, honey. Okay. And I'm gonna put you to bed too, okay? Emma. Just go. Just give us some privacy. You know, it's one thing to keep the truth from me, but why him? I want to find out what's happening here and stop whoever's behind it. Helping people like them? That's why I joined the force. My mission is to take down Umbrella's entire operation. We may not make it out. Whatever it takes to save this city, count me in. Heard of the Umbrella Corporation? They're a pharmaceutical company secretly making bioweapons. They have a virus. It turns people into indestructible monsters. That explains the horrible things I've seen. And that's why I'm looking for Annette Birkin. She's the one at Umbrella responsible for unleashing the virus. I'm going to bring her down. This is how we get to Annette. Based on what you've said, the sewer seems fitting. Well said. After you. Gee, thanks. Can't imagine a real scientist being down here. According to HQ, this leads right into Umbrella's secret facility. Come on. Sewers are run by the city. How could they have a facility without the authorities knowing? Welcome to corporate America. Umbrella's controlled Raccoon City for years. Jesus! That an earthquake? I sure as hell hope so. What the hell? I'm gonna put away my magnum, my grenade, my first aid spray. I'm gonna grab the shotgun so that I can put the upgrade on it and pick up my Matilda. Uh, to beat this next upcoming boss, if you can call it a boss, we will only need one bullet. chance. You're stuck with me to the end. Ugh. Ugh. You sure this is the right way? Unfortunately. Wait there. The pattern for this is always left, right, left. Also, I love the subtitles here. The three exclamation marks. Leon, get out of there! Wait for it. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I mean, like, that's an appropriate reaction. He bites a gas line. Just blow him up. Chew on that. 
you overgrown son of a bitch. It was actually a grenade that uh, his corpse shoved me past. I'm gonna pick it up right here. There we go. So yeah, in the original game, that is uh, quite an involved boss fight. Leon, and here. if you... What you can either destroy was? it or run away from Just it. Get up and here. whatever character you run away from it with, the other one in their B scenario That's actually has to deal with it. You said the virus turned people into monsters, not reptiles. Fair point. I'm just impressed you made it in one piece. So let me get this straight. Umbrella sells monsters like that to who? Our military? Somebody else's? They don't sell the monsters. They sell the viruses that make them. And Annette is who makes the viruses. Scary as that alligator was, Annette is far more dangerous. Identify yourself. Annette Birkin. She's who we're looking for? Not much time. Need to dispose of it. We're here for the G-Virus. Huh. That's not gonna happen. I'm warning you, Doctor. Oh, yeah? Hey! Stop! Stop. Ada! Ah. Didn't expect that from a scientist. Uh, Leon. Forget about me. Just go. Stop her before she gets away. Oh. I'm right outside the facility in pursuit of Annette. It's not on her. It must be in the nest. Once it's in hand, I'll call for extraction. All right. So now you for a short section, that, but you can't hide. we're going to be playing as Ada. Ada has a few unique characteristics compared to the other characters in this game. One is this, the EMF visualizer. It's basically a hacking tool. It allows you to rewire electronics through walls. So by activating this fan and then overloading it, we can create a new pathway for ourselves. We don't have to worry about this zombie, we can just walk right past him. And the other unique thing about Ada is her weapon, her handgun, actually has, of all the pistols, I think one of the highest, if not the highest, critical rate in the game. And what that means is you're much more likely to get a kill with it on a headshot, you're much more likely to break parts with it, like by... Uh, shooting enemies in the legs, etc. So we need to power on this... Uh... I'm just gonna get a stumble on that zombie and walk past him. Remember, enemies stuck in an animation can't do anything. We'll flashbang these two.
And just to be extra safe, I will actually break this guy's leg. Got you now. Always been good at running. Once you jump through that fan, Mr. X can no longer chase you. Never get your filthy hands on the G. I'm not the only one after it. You realize that. And you won't die alone. This is the closest thing to a boss fight that Ada gets, and uh, it's just a challenge, a test involving how good you are at using the EMF visualizer, how good you are at tracing cables through walls and things like that. But the solution for it is very simple. And we're done. That bitch knows what she's doing. Visitor clearance confirmed. Your ID is authorized until October 1st. Please return before this date. Not gonna happen. Enough with this cat and mouse game. The game is over. You lost. Tell me, is your husband still alive? Or did you kill him so you could take credit for G? Interesting theory. If you don't cooperate, I'll get a sample from the nest. Over my dead body. And back to Leon, Ada has bandaged him, and she's put her coat over him to keep him warm. Now our next task is to collect six chess pieces and solve a door puzzle Ada? so that we can rescue Ada. Damn it. Sewers are definitely my worst section. Uh, there's just something weird and unpleasant about them Ada? mechanically and, and geographically. But uh, I don't do like a horrible job. I just take a bit of unnecessary damage and uh, walk into walls a few times. Looks pretty weird, but I decided to keep it in 
and I decided not to scrap this run by popular demand. Some of my viewers, some of my friends uh, in my Discord server suggested that I do keep this run. That they might enjoy, you know, the imperfections and stuff. I can't actually, like, turn them into anything educational, so... Um, it's just... You know, there's nothing valuable about those mistakes. Not like there would be in my Assassin's Creed playthroughs, for example. Because also, I normally would never make those mistakes. Stuff like walking into walls, etc. That only happens because I was sleepy and tired. But anyway, we're gonna pick up those shotgun shells and keep moving. Now that we have the upgrade for the shotgun, the first upgrade, we are able to decapitate zombies at a much farther range. So as long as their head is centered in the crosshair, you can get a decap really easily. Bam. Got that guy. Bam. Got that guy. Shit. And bam, got that guy. See? Very, very nice. There is a knife here that we're gonna pick up. There's a blue herb on this little platform. We're gonna combine it with the green. Green blue mix heals you and dispels poison. And uh, that strange blob creature that we just saw walking away from us, those can poison you. We call them G mutants, and you can get around them by popping them like that so they, you know, pop out of the water. And when you do that, you just run right past them. It's very easy. Cable car. Interesting. It is possible to mess it up, but with a little bit of practice, you get the hang of it pretty much every time. In this room, there's some shotgun ammo and some magnum ammo. Where'd she go? The combo for this is SZF. Sound of that. Come on. Ada. I'm coming, Ada. Alright, so there are a few key items that we want to pick up here. Um, very few of them are actually, you know, real key items. I just mean key as in uh, critical to my approach. So there's a red herb there, we're gonna grab that. This handle is a literal key item. Like we use it to open doors and stuff like that. There's a blue herb in the corner here. Just make sure not to step on this zombie and it won't wake up. Walk back out the way you came. The combo for this safe is written on the side.
gives us yet another upgrade for the shotgun. Stack the blue and the red, make uh, blue-red mix. We'll be passing through this area a few times, so killing all these zombies here is very nice. One, two, three. Dead, dead, dead. Stack the green with the blue and the red. Open this gate. There's a grenade on the left here. Grenades are very useful. We hoard almost all of them for the final boss. That's another thing that I stole from Carsey. And uh, you'll see why later. This is the treatment room key. And it unlocks two doors in the sewers that are very useful. It's completely optional, you never actually have to get it. But uh, on this run, we are going to get it so that we can upgrade the magnum. As well as get some extra flamethrower fuel for insurance. Honestly, we don't even really need it, but I got it anyway. I'm trying to think of what I want to keep and what I want to put away. I think this is fine. Now, going back through this path uh, causes a second Jinryuki to appear right there. And now there will be two of them and they will be on this path forever. What's nice though is we don't actually need to go back this way. Because we have this T-handle, we can return from another direction. And we're going to. Got some shotgun shells. This zombie does wake up, so we're just gonna eliminate him now. This is the film roll for hiding places. It's gonna come in useful soon. This is the treatment facility door. We're gonna open it with this key. We're going to go this way and use the T-handle on our route back to open that up. This will just allow me to discard this item immediately as soon as I use it on uh, the statue gate in the safe room above. There are a few zombies that spawn here, but with the upgraded shotgun, decapitations on them become very simple. Like, look at how far away I'm doing it from. You don't even have to get that close anymore. It just becomes a beast of a weapon, which is what makes it usable on uh, the last two bosses. The completely upgraded shotgun deals absolutely enormous amounts of damage. It's insane. Before we go back upstairs, we are going to go into this room so that we can throw out this key. I'm going to go in here and pick up the large gunpowder 
This will let us make some shotgun ammo later. We'll also take the rook chest piece from here. This raises that walkway so we can't go back there anymore. But that's okay, because we have opened an alternate route back. Gonna look around for items. Um, decided to discard that ammo and pick up the gunpowder instead because that's actually more valuable. Handgun ammo is uh, nearly irrelevant at this point in the game. The only thing that we use it for is to poke enemies and uh, irritate them into getting out of the way and things like that. We don't actually use it to fight anything anymore. Our other weapons are just way too good at that. So see, once I've opened uh, this route, I can just discard this immediately. Uh, now, I am going to be upgrading the magnum to full, which is why that is the weapon I want to have on me. We're going to grab the magnum ammo, grab the lightning hawk, store that, and we're going to move on. Now, at this point, Marvin has fully turned and transformed. And we're not even gonna let him do Marvin. anything. I'll stop this, Lieutenant. I promise. Leon gets some sad feelings, part of his character arc. You know, he really doesn't want to let Marvin down. Wants to make sure to stop the virus and everything. These liquors are still in this hallway. So we're going to be very cautious. What we want to do now is go to the dark room in here, which will be the first time we'll do so on this playthrough. The dark room allows you to develop uh, film rolls into actual photos, which give you the locations of certain items. So now we have the hiding place photos, and not only does this show us where those items are, it actually makes them interactable. Like, if you don't develop this photo, even if you know where those items are, you can't actually pick them up. The game won't let you. But now that we have developed the photo, uh, we actually get the interaction prompt on them, and we can pick them up. The first one is in Albert Wesker's desk. In the star's office. So that liquor is now behind us. Not on the ceiling this time. There's Wesker's office, there's Wesker's desk. Notice that he doesn't just have this little wooden box in there, he also has another film roll. That's uh, a creepy picture of Rebecca Chambers, but uh, we don't care about that. You can pick it up. There's no interaction prompt, but you can pick it up by continuing to mash the interact button. And that will give you the, the record or the achievement for, you know, getting every film roll, developing every film roll. Anyway, that is one of the things we wanted. We have a scope on the Magnum now. Basically allows all shots to be focus shots and incredibly quickly to boot. And the next one we want to get is some extra flamethrower ammo, which is in the conference room. There are some zombies here that we can mop up. So you see that green laser dot? That is what the magnum scope gives us. And as you can see, it also makes focus shot build very quickly. So much, much faster. Because otherwise magnum has the slowest focus shot rate in the game for getting this upgrade. I mean, the weapon is crazy. If you headshot something with it, it just dies.
can bully Mr. X with it and everything. It's it's ridiculous. It makes sense that they wouldn't want it to be, you know, a little bit too overpowered. So we don't need this fuel, so we're going to put it back. We're going to grab the star's badge, examine it, retract the USB part of it to turn it back into a badge. And this will allow us to grab the second magnum upgrade which is also the last magnum upgrade It'll now take two slots in our inventory, but that's okay because we're not going to be picking up the star's badge from there anymore. It has no other functions, no other purpose, so we can just leave it there for the rest of the game. We have what we need from it. Now that that RPD detour is done, and yes, I did forget to pick up the magnum ammo in the locker on the second- on the third floor. I should have, but I didn't remember to pick it up this time. Which is alright. I end up having more than enough magnum ammo for the rest of the run. This route that we opened earlier, we opened it for this reason, so that we can go right back down here. He's too close to the wall, so the animation staggered me a little. I was very lucky that he didn't grab me. This one will, though. Their grab hitbox is crazy, these guys. I don't know if they were playtested enough, but sometimes they can even, like, grab behind themselves. It's wild. Anyway, using a grenade on them as a defense item is usually the best way through. At this point in the playthrough so far, we've taken absolutely no damage, but that is about to change. <laughs> in a very, uh, very unlucky event. And then it kind of jinxes me. And I start taking damage later as well. But that's okay. Anyway, uh, this is a small chess piece puzzle. We need the queen plug from that door. We're going to put it in this door. This allows us to go upstairs. But before we do, we're going to eliminate this guy. Switch to my magnum. Slap his head off. Good stuff. Up here, we can take the king plug. This locks that door, but that's okay, because we can just parkour down here. And I went the wrong way. I realized that. Come back. There we go. This is kind of what I was talking about. Usually I'm very on point when it comes to this area right here. But on this run, I was just starting to make a lot of silly mistakes and walk into walls and stuff. I'm going to use this herb next to give myself a shield so that I can pick up the second plug. Put the queen plug in here. Come this way. Put the king plug in here. Grab this, go down. And now we can get out of here. This one sort of sewer path is probably the worst part of the whole game, honestly. 
I don't know if anyone really enjoys this section. It just fills everybody with dread. So I'm kind of hoping that that guy's not doing much. I shoot him with a magnum, and I get just blocked from moving forward here, so he does hit me. But this next guy is very easy to dodge. This dodge works like 99% of the time. Just bait him into this grab and then curve around him. Super easy. Honestly, I did it kind of poorly there, sloppily. Not to mention that in caution health status, Leon moves slower than when he's at fine health status. So, not only could I have executed that better, I was also moving slower than I should have been. Like, uh, character-wise. But not so bad. Could have been much worse. I've had situations where I've almost died there. Just kept getting grabbed over and over again. Kept feeding them grenades over and over again. This is where we will make our first save once we finish this puzzle. So what we want, we're gonna put the knight here. We're gonna grab the bishop from here and put it in this one right next to the door. Um, check in the description. At first I put the queen here, and then I put the king here. But then I realized, wait, I'm missing the rook. I didn't grab it out of my box, so I'm gonna grab the rook. Put it in the only slot that's left, nothing happens, and then I realize, oh, of course. Come on. It's, uh, it goes here. So that all happened because I didn't already have the rook in my inventory and I got a bit confused okay. as a result. Almost there, Ada. When this door is open, you do want to save here because um, it's just like a nice place to save if you need to, which we're going to because this is a boss that you can lose a lot of resources on, you can lose a lot of health on, you can lose a lot of time on. What we're going to do is pick up uh, one heal, and we're not going to pick up any more because we're going to be building a second one on the way there. I'm going to take out one ink ribbon so I can save with it. I'll walk past the typewriter for a second, and we're going to save here. And that was the first segment. With this, we're now able to go ahead and fight the next boss. So the first thing we'll encounter on our way here is a blue herb, the next thing we'll encounter is a green herb, and in the power room up ahead we'll get a red herb. I'm not stacking them right away because we'll be combining all three of these anyway, and it's best to just go ahead and stack all of them at the same time, just like that. Very quick. The combo for this on first scenario is 1, 2, and 4. Now when we try to exit, this happens. Jesus Christ. And courtesy of the RE2 speedrunning community, we know that chilling out in this spot basically ensures that you will never get hit. So you can just go ahead and wait for G2 to stick his claw in through the ceiling as many times as he wants. When he roars, you can move in front of this shutter along the left side here, and as soon as he rips it off the wall, you can immediately start running past him. It's still alive? 
Your goal here is to try to move as quickly as you can to actually get onto the combat arena. And even though he can do an attack animation on you, if you're already in the descent animation here, he won't hit you. You won't take any damage because you have iframes. So we're going to send this crane away, pick up the flashbang, pick up the knife. What we want to do now is shoot him in the eye with our magnum. Um, whiffing. Alright. When he drops, you can burn him with your flamethrower. If you empty about, you know, a full clip into him, he will be eliminated when you hit him with the crane. I'm just gonna go ahead and dodge that. Lots of damage. He's kinda just staggered. And I'm gonna hold this flashbang while walking to the exact opposite corner of him so that if he wants to run at me, he has a long distance to run. The flashbang was just for insurance, we didn't actually need to use it, which is good, because now we'll be able to use it on other stuff later. Hitting him with the crane is not guaranteed, it is possible to miss with it, and then you'll, you'll have to do it again. But that wasn't so bad. Can get back some more magnum ammo. And we will be on our way. We can go ahead and save Ada now. Come on. Ada! Ada, where are you? Over here! Ada! I was getting worried there for a sec. Get it out. I, I don't know if I should die. Just do it. I can't walk like this. Okay. It's gonna hurt. <sighs> Hold on. I can do it myself. Just relax, okay? <sighs> so, what do we do now? Get yourself out of here, while well, you still can. I'm not just gonna leave you, not like this. You don't understand. The situation's worse than I thought. You're not getting rid of me that easy. You protected me. Now it's my turn. I didn't realize we were keeping score. Grab my shoulder. Don't push it, rookie. Okay, I'm just trying to help. Watch your step. You want to help? We have to get to the nest. Nest? Umbrella's lab, right beneath us. Net let it slip. That's where the virus samples are. You up for this? I think I could fit it in my schedule. Come on. We got work to do. Yes, ma'am. The cable car will take us down to Nest. That wristband's our ticket to ride. Nice. Where'd you get that? Borrowed it. Anyway, we're almost there. We're gonna drop the flamethrower, the flashbang, the grenade, one of the heels, and I'm actually gonna grab the shotgun instead of the magnum. Coming up it'll just be easier to use and we're gonna be getting a ton of shotgun ammo in the lab. Ride, so be prepared. This tram is bound for Nest. 
Do not exit until the final destination. You know what I was thinking? I can't wait for the FBI to raid Umbrella Headquarters and take those bastards to justice. I agree, but to be clear, you're not working in official capacity. This is a federal case. Once we get the G-Virus, I'm back on my own. Hey, Leon. Trust me? Trust me? <laughs> Honestly, if I didn't, you'd probably be dead. Right. I, I thought I might need your help, and I was right. If you can secure the G-Virus, I can make sure what happened in Raccoon City never happens again. Ada, you said it yourself. It's a federal case. I Leon, don't have the authority. Look at me. I'm a liability now. If I'm going to finish this case, you're the last hope I've got. I'm not just going to leave you here. What if you're attacked? What if you need help? I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. I got to see this through. And I want to see you again. I got plenty to live for, trust me. Now, arriving at Ness. Go. Please, we don't have much time. You're gonna need this. Okay. Leon. Counting on you. I know. With the ID wristband that Ada gives us, we can now head right into the nest. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. For your safety. Welcome to Nest. Enjoy your visit. Okay. I wonder where the Jeep virus is. Nest is kind of an interesting location because geographically it's quite small, but it contains enemies that are both difficult to kill and can one shot kill you if you play poorly. So our first order of business is to upgrade our ID wristband, but also to pick up some resources from these rooms here. There's a grenade on that body in the corner. This zombie's gonna come at us. We can shoot him in the head, pick up his fuel. This guy's in an animation, so we can just run past him. There's a large gun powder here, which will come in handy later. A knife, and I'm looking for this guy. Okay, he screamed at me, thank you for that. Get wrecked, we keep moving. We can get the level two ID wristband from Dr. Lee's wrist. And we will come back to this room to pick up some extra stuff, but for now, we can leave it alone. Dr. Lee, your presence is urgently requested by Chief I accidentally accessed the typewriter instead of the storage box. This happens to me a lot here. I'm going to put away one of these knives and keep the large gunpowder. East area. Because I'll be running into a yellow gunpowder very soon.
now that we have level 2 wristband, pressing this button allows us to, you know, move down this walkway as well. Go through this door to the east area. Through this door. We're not really stopping for anything here, and you can see this is kind of the plant life lab. We're gonna encounter a new enemy type here. These two are initially docile and they won't attack us immediately, but we're gonna combine shotgun shells. We're gonna run past this guy before he finishes his get-up animation. We will bypass this flashbang initially because we will return to this area and pick it up then. In the meantime, I need the inventory slot it would go into to be free. Once we dispense this solution, which I'm pretty sure is just water, there's really nothing much in it. These codes you'd normally find out by looking on the hatch or uh, looking at the little statuette that you find on the bottom floor, but you can find uh, their combinations and write them down for yourself. It's much better to not waste time if you're trying to go for S plus rank. There's a large gunpowder and a grenade, and the combination for this dispersal cartridge puzzle is red, green, blue, and then repeat that. And then keep repeating it. So you basically start at red and you go left and you loop around over and over again. This is the solution for first scenario. And for second scenario it's the same thing, but you start at blue. And you go left and loop that way. I decide I don't want to mess with that large gunpowder over there yet. There's also the area map, but we don't need it. So the first order of business here is to acquire these shotgun shells and then just blow up all of these zombies' heads. One, two, three. There you go. That little statuette is what you would normally pick up to find the combination for the... for the keypad. Anywho, the game will spawn in two liquors here, and what you want to do is just kind of lure one of them this way, and try not to walk directly under the other one, just kind of, if you're gonna walk under liquors, do it kind of off to the side, a little bit askew. Don't go directly under them. Anyway, we're gonna blow this guy's head off, move up, another will fall on the stairs right here. We're gonna blow this guy's head off. Here is a yellow gunpowder to stack with our large gunpowder. Make more shotgun shells, blow her head off. This is a one-way door that we can unlock. That's open now. You can kind of see what I mean, like the Metroidvania slash almost Souls-like world structure where there's a lot of doors that only open from one side, and once you open them, you've created a shortcut for yourself to re-explore the world further. It's nice. I like this kind of... this kind of world structure, this kind of world design. It makes it very satisfying to, you know, map areas in your head, and even, you know, with an actual map, as is the case in this game. It's very satisfying to open up those kind of shortcuts. Right, so one of the things that we picked up upstairs was the signal modulator, which basically allows us to hack these wall panels and to power on different areas, usually to turn on the lights, to open doors, things like that. 
So this one is Murph. So we're gonna solve for Murph. Use Murph on it. And it is all fine. With these two liquors, what we want to do is lure this one around the table along the left side. There you go, good boy. And then the other one, again, we're just gonna walk right past them, no problem. That way we split them so that we don't actually have to touch any of them. And they won't detect us, they won't fight us. Now this door is unlocked, which allows us to freeze Welcome the back, Dr. liquid in the dispersal cartridge. Ugh. Who left the freezer open? We need to do this in order to uh, kill the plants in the lab above us. When we do so, a body will fall Ooh, from the roof. The ceiling, I should say, and we'll be able to upgrade our ID wristband one more level, and that will let us acquire the G-Virus. There's a normal gunpowder in that room that, as far as I'm aware, we don't actually grab. On B scenario, on second scenario, you would want to grab that gunpowder. If it's even there. I haven't played second scenario in a while. One of the other doors that powering this area on unlocks is this one, which is a door to another save room. In here we can pick up a knife. We can put away the grenade, one of the knives, grab this fuel, come over here, grab this yellow gunpowder, put away the fuel, and I left a large gunpowder out in this external area over here. I'm gonna curve around this ladder, pick up the map, pick up the gunpowder, stack yellow with large, stack shells with shells. Now we have a lot of shotgun ammo, which is very nice because shotguns are one of the best ways to knock these guys backwards so that we can run past them. They take a lot of hit stun from a shotgun blast. We're gonna pick up this red herb now. And once we use the dispersal cartridge on the dispersal machine, we will be able to pick up the flashbang that this cartridge vacated the slot for. Plants die, this body falls, so does the ID chip. What this also does is kill all the IV zombies that uh, we're currently walking around, and it basically spawns in a new cluster of them. So they'll be in different positions. You see? They're not doing anything now. They're about to. And one more thing. When you pick up this chip, Mr. X will spawn in again and start following you. So you have enemies that will kill you in one shot if they grab you. You have a tyrant that wants to punch you and will also kill you in one shot if he grabs you. And it's generally just a bad time. He is right behind me. We're gonna run this way. I wanna knock this one back and I wanna knock this one back. And I do not get any more hit stun on this guy. And he walks into the wall and blocks me off. So I can't really move easily. I get quite fortunate to avoid any and all one-hit kills there using my knife, that's why I brought it. Against IV zombies, you could you could just never be too prepared, basically. Please always bring at least one knife with you to just get away from their grab. Because if you let the full animation play, you just die. They, they eat your head, and you die. Hopefully the G-sample's up here. Yes, Leon, hopefully the G-sample is over there. However, we are not going to get it. 
we are going to upgrade our inventory ones because we're gonna need two extra slots to comfortably fight the next bosses. There are two left in this playthrough. So this is the area that I said we'd be coming back to later. Now that we have the signal modulator, we're able to power it on. And we can pick up some goodies that we were not able to get previously. So we need to solve for Muff. There we go. Use that. There's another hip pouch, expander inventory. There is a flamethrower regulator there that we're going to pick up. Dr. Lee is the zombie in that room. If you're quick enough, you can leave before he is able to get into any kind of active frames. There's also a Mr. Raccoon statue in one of the cubbies, like in one of the little bed chambers. If you destroy all the Mr. Raccoons, you get an infinite durability combat knife, which can be very handy. Now, we can go and secure the G-Virus. There's a grenade beside this body. There's also a videotape that lets you see some lore, which uh, unfortunately I do actually not get on this playthrough. We're going to attach the flamethrower regulator to the flamethrower, upgrade it, select the flamethrower, reload it, put that back in the box. Gonna power this on. Sulfur OSS. There we go. Alright, lights are on. I'm gonna do a quick sweep of this area to make sure I haven't like missed anything before I go on. I know that there is a blue herb in this corner, but I'm just checking around here to see if I might have missed anything else, and no, I haven't. There's a large gunpowder here, there's a yellow gunpowder here, gonna make shotgun shells, stack with stack. I do not combine the red and the blue because here I'm gonna be doing a bunch of chemistry and just kind of seeing which mixes I can complete because at this point my inventory is full of various herb mixes that are not capped out. So now I'm looking for a red and blue, there you go. See, that was much better. We used three individual herbs to complete various mixes instead of just, you know, indiscriminately and blindly mixing whatever the game happened to give us. It's something that's nice to do, huh. just so that you can that increase the number of RGB mixes you can get. All right. Which, uh, as a reminder, they heal you fully, they dispel poison if you're poisoned, and they give you a damage shield, which really helps if you're anticipating getting hit. And for this next fight, we are going to be anticipating getting hit. Because uh, I'm bad at dodging this guy. We're going to take out shotgun, flamethrower, flash grenades. Uh, I'm trying to decide what I want here. Definitely a knife. And then I realize... hold on a second. If I put back the grenade, I can get another heal, which was actually a good choice, as you'll see. We're going to use the ink ribbon to save. And that's our second save. That's our second segment. Virus 
we're gonna equip this knife because we'll be using it to deal some damage. Switch to shotgun because we'll be using it to open the fight. involved in this yes but we never meant for this to happen then tell me everything right from the start <coughs> you don't get away that easily the backstory here is that uh an umbrella team of mercenaries came in, shot him up, took the viruses, but one was left. Good God, William. What have you done? So you made this monster. We made the G-Virus, but we never intended this You can spin it any way you want. You're still responsible. <laughs> So at the outset of this fight, I really want to pop his eyes. If you pop all of them, he will slump over on his knees, he'll be stunned for a while. And during this stun, you can deal a lot of damage to him. I narrowly avoid that. I'm trying to pop his other eye. There we go. Now we're just going to slash the hell out of him. Our knife is red, that means we can switch to our other one. Slash him a few more times, and then we want to back away because at this point it's a bit too risky to keep attacking him. I'm going to start torching him with the flamethrower. With the flamethrower regulator, you expend less fuel per second by holding the trigger, and that's really good. Just kind of trying to dodge his swipes. I'm trying to shoot his eye again. Pop one. That is gonna hit me. I'm gonna immediately open my inventory and heal with a shield heal. I'm unable to dodge that. If I popped his eye there, it would have been really good. And I'm gonna immediately need another shield heal. Very sloppy play. Slump over again. We're gonna come over here, start knifing him. Let's just get some extra damage and kind of torch him again. Just gonna come over here, pick up this big panel. The safe spot is just anywhere to the side, just anywhere he doesn't end up hitting with it. And then he's done. 
I could have done that fight a little bit better by using a flashbang earlier, because the game does give you an extra flashbang and an extra hand grenade in this arena. And what we're going to do now is walk around and grab relevant items. So there's nothing here, there are two cases of handgun ammo there that we don't want, because we don't really use handgun for anything. Another flashbang, very nice. I'm just scouring the area for items. This does waste a little bit of time, but it's well worth it. First aid spray, we might use it later. Uh, I don't want this box of ammo. Picking that up was a mistake. We don't use the handgun for anything anymore, like I said. There's some magnum ammo. Some fuel, we don't want this. The flamethrower will not be used for anything, and I will discard this very weak knife to pick up this hand grenade, and then we can leave. Uh, for a moment I'm like, wait, did I check that item? And then I remembered that I did. Yep, it's just flamethrower fuel. Once again, irrelevant. Flamethrower is possibly one of the worst weapons you can use on the upcoming boss. It doesn't do what you want to him. Worse. Believe me. Talk about what you said. I don't know how much I believe. Just tell me you'll destroy that G sample. No, it's evidence. It's going to the FBI. <laughs> you trust that bitch? What's that supposed to mean? She's not FBI. She's a mercenary. She's gonna sell it. G-Virus is gonna go to the highest bidder. Oh, that's bullshit. I hope you're right. But if the G-Virus gets into the wrong hands... We've received some distressing revelations about Miss Ada Wong. Gonna store all the flashbangs, take an extra knife. Put the flamethrower away. I think that's pretty good for now. We're gonna pick up uh, first aid spray and another knife very soon. Just thinking about you. That makes two of us. I was getting worried. You know, we make a good team. I gotta ask you something. Way's clear. Please, tell me you got it. Oh, I got it. Let me verify the G sample when we get the hell out of here. Before we do that, I ran into Annette. She claims you're not FBI. Why couldn't you just hand over the sample? Because I realized, as much as I wanted to trust you, I didn't. I really hoped it wouldn't end up like this. So that's all this was? I was just some pawn to you? Look, I'm just doing my job. And I'm doing mine, so drop that damn gun! I'm taking you in. Hand over the sample, Leon. I don't want to hurt you. You shoot me, but I don't think you can.
not worth it. Don't do this. Take care of yourself, Leon. Self-destruct sequence initiated. Use the central elevator to evacuate immediately to the bottom level train platform. What's that? Attention. Self-destruct sequence initiated. Use the central elevator to evacuate immediately to the bottom level train platform. Claire! Leon? You're down here too! Attention. Yeah. But the whole place is coming down. Listen to me. You need to get out. Fast. Yeah. There's a way out. We can make it. Where are you now? Claire, are you still there? Leon? Hey, Leon, you're breaking up. Forget about me. Just get out of here. Damn it. Incoming badass music. I want to be quiet throughout most of this because I love this track so much. We don't even really need this save, but we make it anyway, just because I can show you if you really want to be safe, this is a decent place to do it. This is the last storage box in Leon's campaign, on his first scenario anyway. So what we're gonna do is put back one of these knives, take a heal, uh, take another heal, put that away, put the first aid spray away. 
I deliberate a little bit, do I want the shotgun or do I want the magnum? And then I realize they both have exactly the same ammo count. But the shotgun is easier to aim with. And that's kind of what matters more. We're gonna grab as many grenades as we can pull out of this box. We need those two slots to be free. So I remove the magnum and take that. This is the joint plug. That's why we need two slots free, because we cannot proceed without picking it up. And the reason why we can't proceed without picking it up is because the game also needs you to have two slots free during the fight for a certain reason. Like Capcom are not just being bastards to the player by filling up your inventory, they're making sure you have two slots free. Remember Mr. X? This is him now. Feel old yet? We've blown off the top part of his trench coat. His arm is on fire. Come on. I love that. Alright, come on. Leon's not having any of it. You can open this fight by slashing him in the heart until you get a stagger. In fact, that is the only thing you're concerned with in this fight, is causing enough staggers to him. He has, uh, I believe, 1 million hit points, like in the game's data, that is how much health he has. It is mathematically impossible to deal that much damage within this time with limit, this which means we must find some other method of eliminating him. But if you cause stagger to him enough times, and wait long enough, something will happen. That attack is an instant kill if you let it hit you. We'll call it even. She survived. Where did this thing come from? The rocket launcher allows you to eliminate tyrants in two shots on hardcore. And that is Resident Evil 2. At the bottom level. Six minutes until detonation. I actually miss her. Leon? Hey. We made it. Just like I said we would. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. I had a lot of fun making it. 
simply because I have a lot of fun playing this game. Um, I left the mistakes in and I left the imperfections and flaws in because I was asked to do so. I could have probably made a cleaner run if I had, you know, reset a bunch of times and kept trying over and over again, but I think I had a good time with this one. I really enjoyed playing it, I really enjoyed making it. Resident Evil 3 releases on April 3rd, 2020, and I'm excited to play that.